tonight is May the 30th, 2014, and while there are many YouTube videos out there about cantina type antennas, um, I thought I would make one that is uh, has some real measurements to it. What I have here is uh, I have a uh, HP 80, I can't see it here in the dark, 8648C signal generator. I've got it set to 2.440 gigahertz. And I'll be uh, measuring the output of it over here on this uh, 8596E spectrum analyzer. What I did in the beginning <clears throat> is I set up two dipole, not dipole, excuse me, monopole antennas ground plane, large ground plane. These things come out to be 1.2 inches. I can tune these, I can tune this one to be resonant at the, the 2.440 gig and they work great. These two are exactly the same, exactly the same size. And what I did was uh, take the output of my RF, I have a little uh, wideband amplifier here, and get a half a watt at two point, at the 2.4 gigahertz, damn it. And um, I don't think I heard anything though. And what I've, what I've been working on here for some time, this thing may look like some precursor to a nuclear weapon, but uh, these are tuning stubs. There's the driven element in there. You can probably see it. I've got a little piece of tape on it right now. But uh, they're very, very sensitive. And I'll show you what I can do now. I'll turn the RF on. And I have RF output. Here's my RF output. It's actually not 2.27 watts. Uh, this is a 1 watt bird slug that goes from 2.4 gigahertz to 2.5 gigahertz at 1 watt. If I put it on the 1 watt scale, it actually tells me my forward power, but I've noticed that if I put it on the 5 watt scale, I get um, I get uh, a better reading on reflected power. And here's my reflected power. Let's turn it here. It's 0.02 right now. Okay. Because I got pointed at me. Now, see, I have zero reflected power. I'm messing with it. If I uh, lay this thing down here, okay, you can watch both at the same time. Get myself untangled. Let's turn the light off here. Turn the light on in there. You can see the zero, zero. Now watch when I put my hand in front of it. See, it goes up significantly because I got my hand in front of it. Take my hand off. Well, it took me quite a while to get to a true 50 ohm impedance match here. There is a lot of information out on YouTube about these cantinas. I'm going to take this thing off. I've shown you that. I'm going to turn the RF off. Okay, first of all, theoretically, this feed point right here should be a quarter wavelength. Well, it just does, it, I just could not make it work. Here's another four inch can. All my cans are four inches in diameter because they fit uh, four inch PVC. Well, this one's a quarter wavelength, 1.2 inches. Couldn't make it match to save my life. This one is about 2.1 inches. It's, it's pretty critical. Of course, uh, what I did here to make the uh, the monopole in there is I used this hollow tubing right here. There it is. So you can see it's, it's copper. And then I slid uh, this piece of brass goes inside so I could make that adjustable. It's got a little piece of tape on it right now. I think you can see. That's very critical. So you got to put your finger in there and measure it and you know pull it in and out until you get the best match you can. Okay, now some of the amateur radio 
uh, articles on it. Put a tuning stub uh, right here directly in line with the driven element. That makes it really, really sensitive. If you put it at 90 degrees, it's much less sensitive. And here I have one at approximately 270 degrees. And as you tune these things in and out, uh, this one being uh, you know perpendicular, the driven element. This one up here uh, being perpendicular. Also, this one being at uh, uh, let's see, it'd be, be 90 to 270 degrees to it instead of 180 or whatever it comes out to be. Sorry, I'm not doing the math right now. But anyway, you tune these things in and out by screwing them in and out, and you do, and I end up with a perfect match. Okay, now I'm going to show you what I get from. And, and this is crude. I, I'll admit it's crude because I'm not making uh, very uh, exact measurements. But if I put uh, a signal into this dipole, and then I this is my receiving dipole over here, and this will be my uh, what I'm going to be measuring it on. The center is 2.440 gig. You'll see what kind of a signal I get, and then you'll see what kind of a gain I get just out of the cantina with these dimensions. So it seems like what I see on the on YouTube and the internet is a lot of people have pieces of it right, but they don't have it all right. That's what I have, uh, what's the conclusion I'm coming to, because nobody has any real measurements. That right there gives you a 50 ohm match, crazy as it may be. Now this is a permanent, of course, I would put uh, shorter screws in there so they won't be sticking out there. But uh, let me set this thing up and I'll show you what kind of signal level, uh, generally speaking, I get from transmitting a monopole to a monopole with a perfectly matched one at this end and a perfectly matched one at this end. Let me set that up and I'll show you. Okay, I'm feeding this antenna. You can see I have. Uh, zero reflected power. Hope I don't cause myself too much trouble here, but it, if you can uh, see the two at the same time here, and watch when I, if I, I'm going to lengthen this, if I lengthen it, see how my reflected power goes up? 05. I'm going to adjust it back down. 01, a little bit shorter, 00. Oh, oh. Got the same thing over there. Okay, here's what I'm getting right now, except I've got to try not to get in the middle. I realize it's varying a little bit. If we zoom in on this, we see that we're at about uh, one mark down from the top. That'd be uh, minus 10 dB. The uh, SA is set at 0 dB. You can see that at the top. See, we're one, just a little bit more than uh, one line down from the top. So, a little bit more than 10 dB down from the top. Okay, now I'm going to put this guy on there, the Cantina, and we'll generally measure as crude a setup as this may be from here to there same distance try to get as best I can same distance between the two I'll show you what kind of gain we get okay now I've got it uh, set up as reasonably as I can and if you look over there those zeros right there 0, 0.00 is not easy to come by that took a lot of it took all of the tuning here and everything. Okay, it's important to uh, orient the uh, driven element vertical. So I've got it, I'm holding it vertical and I'm pointing it as best I can, the same distance from here to there. And here's what we get. If you can notice right there, we're at the top of the scale. Get this thing to focus nicely. We've got a good 10 dB gain, a power factor of at least 10. 
it's working. Quite amazing, huh? At least 10 dB gain. 10 dB gain is nothing to sneeze at. I'm going to watch. I'm going to point this thing. Okay, let me back off here. I'm going to point it kind of up in the air and watch what happens. There you go. See? I mean, it just practically goes away. I can turn it toward me, point it toward the ground, put my hand in front of it. Attenuated, but it is uh, actually uh, quite impressive. Now, I'm not going to do it tonight. I'm going to go ahead and post this. I'm not going to uh, finish this up tonight. But uh, I've got a parabolic dish outside. It's three feet in diameter. I'll show you, show you a little bit of it right now. Let's turn the RF off. It's this guy right here. Hope there's enough light. Yes. Yeah. See that dish right there? That's what I'm going to put it into and see if I can get another 10 or so dB gain out of that. I believe I can. But I like to measure things. I really do. So let's see how it works out. This is a cantina with a, a 50 ohm match. And I can measure it. Really enjoy it. Hope this helps. Quite a mess around here. I had to open a lot of cans of beans. See, this was a pork and beans can, bush pork and beans. This was some yams. These two over here are some free holies. So I got a lot of beans and yams, and my wife is all pissed off at me. So I'm going to be eating beans and yams for a day or two. But it's worth it.